welcome back to New Start Discipleship, day 34. We are today in a big transition in the story of God's people um, and how he prepared the world for the entrance of his son Jesus. And so in 1 Samuel 7 through 9 and 15 through 17, we have the story of a big transition. So after God's people come out of Egypt, they're led by Moses, they're led by a... Um, a, another man named Joshua, Moses' assistant, and then after that it's a series of kind of judges as there's no one uh, visible person who's in charge. The people are supposed to be following God, but they wind up not, and that always causes a problem. And so God will raise up a prophet to speak for him, and the people will repent for a time and then go up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, like we talked about yesterday. So now, finally, the people come to Samuel, who was a the last of the judges and the first of the prophets who served under kings. Um, and so they say, we want a king. We want to be like other nations. We want a king. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why this is a problem. Samuel like really grieves over this, and uh, he grieves over it because um, God's people were turning to a human and political solution for their spiritual problem, right? They, they had a wandering heart, and they thought that politics would help them to be able to not have a wandering heart. And the problem is that that's not really true. Uh, there's no human institution of power that can fix the problem of the human heart. Uh, what we need is a savior um, that can can change us from within, a king that can reign within instead of just a political power structure that pushes that 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 comes uh, to us and gives us security, meaning, and something to follow. So Samuel is really really grieved by this, and I would I would just tell you uh, that in your life I would encourage you to uh, to to trust in God, and if you the more you believe and trust in God, the more you obey Him. Uh, the more that he sets you free to be the person you ought to be. And uh, so uh, I, I, I think it's always important that Christians not get too trusting in human political power institutions, all right? Uh, now, in, in, uh, in the life of Saul, we have several, um, it kind of gives us a reason, one of the reasons why the king thing was not such a good idea. And it gives us a warning for our personal spiritual lives as well, because Saul starts off really well. Like God chooses him, and he starts off really well. He's an impressive individual. He's physically intimidating and powerful and, and uh, takes command pretty well. But his heart turns out to not be fully committed to the Lord. And he, he, doesn't, get, he doesn't stay careful in his obedience. Um, and then he kind of starts having to cover it up with some dishonesty and some um, some misleading statements, and, and he doesn't fully obey the Lord. And God rejects Saul from being the king. And so I would just, my, my challenge to you would be um, to, to learn from the life of Saul and say, Lord, don't give me a heart like Saul. Don't let me have a heart that is partial in my obedience or is, doesn't really fully follow the Lord and doesn't really follow all the way to the end and stay careful in my obedience. Instead, give me a heart that's different than that. And so uh, the rise and the fall of Saul is a very fascinating uh, story in the book of uh, Samuel, uh, written about Samuel the prophet. And so um, I want to uh, tell you that that in the next big transition, you got to understand this so you understand David, who's the next king that we're going to talk about uh, next time. And so um, today, I hope that I hope that God uses this to increase your determination not to just start well, right, like Saul, not to just start well, but to finish well as well. And so uh, let's work uh, let's work toward that together, and we'll see you tomorrow.